chapter 16, The Goblet of Fire. I don't believe it, Ron said in a stunned voice as the Hogwarts students filed back up the steps behind the party from dump train. Crumb, Harry, Victor Crumb, for heaven's sake, Ron, he's only a Quidditch player, said Hermione. Only a Quidditch player, Ron said, looking at her as though he couldn't believe his ears. Öyle bir utacaksın ki Ron laflarını hani neyse. Hermione, he is one of the best seekers in the world. I had no idea he was still at school. As they crossed the entrance hall with the rest of the Hogwarts students heading for the Great Hall, Harry saw Lee Jordan jumping up and down on the soles of his feet to get a better look at the back of Crumb's head. Several sixth-year girls were frantically searching their pockets as they walked. Oh, I don't believe it. I haven't got a single quill on me. Do you think he'd sign my head in lipstick? Really, Hermione said loftily as they passed the girls, now squabbling over the lipstick. I'm getting his autograph if I can, said Ron. You haven't got a quill, have you, Harry? Nope, they're upstairs in my bag, said Harry. They walked over to the Gryffindor table and sat down. Ron took care to sit on the side facing the doorway because Krum and his fellow downstairs students were still gathered around it apparently unsure about where they should sit. The students from Big Buttons had chosen seats at the Ravenclaw table. They were looking around the great hall with glum expressions on their faces. Three of them were still clutching scars and shawls around their heads. It's not that cold, said Harmony defensively. Why didn't they bring clocks? Over here, come and sit over here, Ron hissed. Over here, like a, over here, come and sit over here, Ron hissed. Burada böyle bir dilekte bulunur gibi böyle kendi kendine konuşuyormuş gibi midi yoksa cidden bağırıyor mu onu çözemedim. Over here, Hermione, budge up, make a space, what? Too late, said Ron bitterly. Victor Crumb and his fellow downstream students had settled themselves at the Slytherin table. Here you could see Malfoy, Crabbe and Goyle looking very smug about this as he watched Crumb, as he watched Malfoy bend forward to speak to Crumb. Burada aklıma ilginç bir nokta takıldı. Çok da ilginç değil ama şimdi bu dans renkler zaten kara büyü yapıyor. Slytherinler işte kara büyü yapmaya en yakın olanlar şeyde Hogwarts'ta. Onlar onun yanına oturdular. Slytherin dans renk şey gibi olmuş oldu. Ravenclaw'la işte Big Spotters'lar olmuş gibi oldu. Hufflepuff kendi adayını çıkaracak. Ortaya bir Gryffindor kalıyor. Ekstrem bir durum olursa Gryffindor'un adayı çıkacak gibi olacaktı. Harry çıkmış olacak falan. Hani böyle bir denklik var. Aynen. Darmstrang, Slytherin, işte Big Spotters, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, Sedic Ligori zaten. Harry de şey olacak. Gryffindor. Victor Crumb and his fellow Darmstrang students had settled themselves at the Slytherin table. Harry could see Malfoy, Crabbe and Goyle looking very smug about this. As he watched, Malfoy bent forward to speak to Crumb. Yeah, that's right. Small up to him, Malfoy said Ron, scathingly. I bet Crumb can see right through him, through the Jesus. O kadar yutacağın ki laflarını. But he gets people phoning over him all the time. Where do you reckon they're going to sleep? We could offer him a space in our dormitory, Harry. I wouldn't mind giving him my bed. I could keep on a cat bed. Hermione snorted. They look a lot happier than the <coughs> big buttons lot, said Harry. The Darmstrang students were pulling off their heavy furs and looking up at this teary black ceiling with expressions of interest. A couple of them were picking up the golden plates and goblets and examining them, apparently impressed. Jesus, buna baya fakir lan demek ki. <clears throat> up at the staff table, Filch, the caretaker, was adding chairs. He was wearing his moldy old tail coat in honor of the occasion. Harry was surprised to see that he added four chairs, two on either side of Dumbledore's. But there are only two extra people, Harry said. Why is Fitch putting out four chairs? Who else is coming? And said Ron vaguely, he was still staring vividly at Crumb. When all the students had entered the hall and settled down at their house tables, the staff entered, filing up to the top table and taking their seats. Last in line were Professor Dumbledore, Professor Karkaroff, and Madame Maxime. When their headmistress appeared, the pupils from Big Spotters leaped to their feet. Leapt to their feet. A few of the Hogwarts students laughed. 
the Vix Buttons party appeared quite unembarrassed, however, and did not resume their seats until Madame Maxim had sat down on Dumbledore's left hand side. Dumbledore remained standing, and a silence fell over the great hall. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, ghosts, and most particularly guests, said Dumbledore, beaming around at the foreign students. I have great pleasure in welcoming you all to Hogwarts. I hope and trust that your stay here will be both comfortable and enjoyable. One of the big buttons girls, still clutching a muffler around her head, gave what was unmistakably a derisive laugh. No one's making you stay, Harmony whispered, bristling at her. The tournament will be officially opened at the end of the feast, said Dumbledore. I now invite you all to eat, drink, and make yourselves at home. He sat down and Harry saw Karkarov lean forward at once and engage him in conversation. The place in front of them filled with food as usual. The house elves in the kitchen seemed to have pulled out all the stops. There was a greater variety of dishes in front of them than Harry had ever seen, including several that were definitely foreign. Like, uh, the place in front of them filled with food as usual. Ha, tamam. Tabakların yemekle doldurulması normal her zaman olduğu gibi ama bir sürü yeni çeşit geliyor. O ilk defa olan bir şey. What's that? said Ron, pointing at a large dish of some sort of shellfish stew that stood beside a large stick and kidney pudding. Bu ul, dur lan. Bu liya ba isse said Hermione. Bless you said Ron. It's French said Hermione. I had it on holiday summer before last. It's very really nice. I take your word for it, said Ron, helping himself to black pudding. The great hall seemed somehow much more crowded than usual, even though there were barely 20 additional students there. Perhaps it was because their differently colored uniforms stood out so clearly against the black of the Hogwarts' robes. Now that they had removed their furs, the dumbstrang students were revealed to be wearing robes of a deep blood red. Hagrid sidled into the hall to a door behind the staff table 20 minutes after the start of the feast. He slid into his seat at the end and waved at Harry, Ron and Harmony with a very heavily bandaged hand. Screeves doing all right, Hagrid Harry called. Trivin, Hagrid called back happily. Yeah, I just bet they are, said Ron quietly. Looks like they finally found a food they like, doesn't it? Hagrid's fingers. At that moment, a voice said, Excuse me, are you wanting the boilia baisse? It was the girl from Beaks Buttons who had laughed during Dumbledore's speech. She had finally removed her muffler. A long sheet of silvery blonde hair fell almost to her waist. She had large, deep blue eyes and very white, even teeth. Ron went purple. He stared up at her, opened his mouth to reply, but nothing came out except a faint, gurgling noise. Yeah, I have it, said Harry, pushing the dish toward the girl. You have finished with it? Yeah, Ron said breathlessly. Yeah, it was excellent. The girl picked up the dish and carried it carefully off to the Ravenclaw table. Ron was still goggling at the girl as though he had never seen one before. Harry started to laugh. The sound seemed to jog Ron back to his senses. She's a villa, he said hoarsely to Harry. Of course she isn't, said Harmony tartly. I don't see anyone escaping at her like an idiot. But she wasn't entirely right about that. As the girl crossed the hall, many boys' heads turned, and some of them seemed to have become temporarily speechless, just like Ron. I'm telling you, that's not a normal girl, said Ron, leaning sideways so he could keep a clear view of her. They don't make them like that at Hogwarts. <laughs> <gülüyor> they don't make them like that at Hogwarts. Hogwarts'da böyle kızlar yok diyor. They make them okay at Hogwarts at Harry without thinking. Cho happened to be sitting only a few places away from the girl with the silvery hair. When you both put your eyes back in, said Harmony briskly, you'll be able to see who is just arrived. She was pointing up at the staff table. The two remaining empty seats had just been filled. Ludo Bagman was now sitting on Professor Karkarov's other side, while Mr. Crouch, Percy's boss, was next to Madame Maxim. What are they doing here, said Harry in surprise. They organized a three-wizard tournament, didn't they, said Harmony. 
I suppose they wanted to be here to see it start. When the second course arrived, they noticed a number of unfamiliar deserts too. Ron examined an old sort of pale blank mange closely, <clears throat> then moved it carefully a few inches to his right so that it, so that it would be clearly visible from the Ravenclaw table. Jesus, Ron, the girl who looked like a villa appeared to have eaten enough, however, and did not come over to get it. Once the golden place had been wiped clean, Dumbledore stood up again. A pleasant sort of tension seemed to fill the hall now. He felt a slight thrill of excitement, wondering what was coming. Several seats down from them, Fred and George were leaning forward, staring at Dumbledore with great concentration. The moment has come, said Dumbledore, smiling around at the sea of upturned faces. The three wizard tournament is about to start. I would like to say a few words of explanation before we bring in the casket. The what? He muttered. Ron shrugged. Just to clarify the procedure that we will be following this year. But first, let me introduce, for those who do not know of them, Mr. Bartemius Crouch, head of the Department of International Magical Cooperation. There was a smattering of polite applause, and Mr. and Mr. Ludo Bagman, head of the Department of Magical Games and Sports. There was a much louder round of applause for Bagman than for Crouch, perhaps because of his fame as a beater or simply because he looked so much more likable. He acknowledged it with a jovial wave of his hand. Şöyle bir şey herhalde. Bartemius Crouch did not smile or wave when his name was announced, remembering him in his neat suite at the neat suite. Suit diyeceğim. Ama daha doğrusu var sanki. Building seat. Suit. Suit. At the Quidditch World Cup, he thought he looked strange in wizard's robes. His toothbrush, mustache and swear parting looked very odd next to Dumbledore's long white hair and beard. Mr. Bagman and Mr. Crouch have worked tirelessly over the last few months on the arrangements for the three wizard tournament. Dumbledore continued. And they will be joining myself, Professor Karkarov, and Madame Maxim on the panel that will judge the champions' efforts. At the mention of the word champions, the attentiveness of the listening students seemed to sharpen. Perhaps Dumbledore had noticed their sudden stillness, for he smiled as he said, The casket then, if you please, Mr. Filch. Filch, who had been Lurking unnoticed in a far corner of the hall, now approached Dumbledore carrying a great wooden chest encrusted with jewels. It looked extremely old. A murmur of excited interest rose from the watching students. Dennis Creevy actually stood on his chair to see it properly, but being so tiny, his head hardly rose above anyone else's. The instructions for the tasks the champions will face this year have already been examined by Mr. Crouch and Mr. Bagman, said Dumbledore, as Fitch placed as Fitch placed the chest carefully on the table before him, and they have made the necessary arrangements for each challenge. There will be three tasks spaced throughout the school year, and they will test the champions in many different ways, their magical prowess, their daring, their powers of deduction, and of course, their ability to cope with danger. At this last word, the hall was filled with a silence so absolute that nobody seemed to be breathing. As you know, three champions compete in the tournament, Dumbledore went on calmly, one from each of the participating schools, they will be marked on how well they perform each of the tournament tasks and the champion champion with the highest total after task three will after three task after task three will win the three wizard cup. The champions will be chosen by an impartial selector, the goblet of fire. Dumbledore now took out his wand and tapped three times upon the top of the casket. The lid creaked slowly open. Dumbledore reached inside it and pulled out a large, roughly hand wooden cup. It would have been entirely unremarkable had it not been full to the brim with dancing blue-white flames. Tamamıyla normal bir şeymiş. M- mavi, beyaz şeyleri dışında, alevi dışında. <coughs>
Dumbledore closed the casket and placed the goblet carefully on top of it, where it would be clearly visible to everyone in the hall. Anybody wishing to submit themselves as champion must write their name and school clearly upon a slip of parchment and drop it into the goblet, said Dumbledore. Aspiring champions have 24 hours in which to put their names forward. Jesus, diğer bölümde görüyoruz mu yani? Ya da şey, iki bölüm sonra. Tomorrow night Halloween, the goblet will return the names of the three it has judged most worthy to represent their schools. The goblet will be placed in the entrance hall tonight, where it will be freely accessible to all those wishing to compete. To ensure that no underage student yields to temptation, said Dumbledore, I will be drawing an age line around the goblet of fire once it has been placed in the entrance hall. Nobody under the age of 17 will be able to cross this line. Finally, I wish to impress upon any of you wishing to compete that this tournament is not to be entered into lightly. Once a champion has been selected by the Goblet of Fire, he or she is obliged to see the tournament through to the end. The placing of your name in the Goblet constitutes a binding magical contact. There can be no change of heart once you have become a champion. Please be very sure, therefore, that you are wholeheartedly prepared to play before you drop your name into the goblet. Now I think it is time for bed. Good night to you all. An age line, Fred Vizzi said, his eyes glinting as they all made their way across the hall to the doors into the entrance hall. Well, that should be fooled by an aging potion, shouldn't it? And once your name's in that goblet, you're laughing. It can't tell whether you're 17 or not. But I don't think anyone under 17 will stand a chance at Harmony. We just haven't learned enough. Speak for yourself, said George shortly. You'll try and get in, won't you, Harry? Harry thought briefly of Dumbledore's insistence that nobody under 17 should submit their name. But then the wonderful picture of himself winning the Three Wizard Tournament filled his mind again. He wondered how angry Dumbledore would be if someone younger than 17 did find a way to get over the age line. Where is he, said Ron, who wasn't listening to a word of this conversation, but looking through the crowd to see what had become of Crumb. Dumbledore didn't say where the downstream people are sleeping, did he? But this query was answered almost instantly. They were level with the Slytherin table now, and Karkarov had just bustled up to his students. Back to the ship, then, he was saying, Victor, how are you feeling? Did you eat enough? Should I send for some mulled wine from the kitchens? He saw Cram shake his head as he put his furs back on. Professor, I would, I would like some wine, said one of the other dumpstring boys, hopefully. I wasn't offering it to you, Polyakov, snapped Karkarov his warmly paternal air vanishing in an instant. I notice you have dribbled food all down the front of your robes again, disgusting boy. Karkarov turned and let his students cover the doors, reaching them at exactly the same moment as Harry, Ron and Harmony. Ben burada tek bir şey oluyor zannediyordum ama iki şey oluyormuş. Ee, Karkarov Harry'yi görüp şok olacak. Artı Kram Harmony'yi görmüş olacak. Uf. He is stopped to let him walk through first. Thank you, said Karkarov carelessly, glancing at him. And then Karkarov froze. He turned his head back to Harry and stared at him as though he couldn't believe his eyes. Behind their headmaster, the students from Darmstrang came to a halt too. Karkarov's eyes moved slowly up Harry's face and fixed upon his scar. The Darmstrang students were staring curiously at Harry too. Out of the corner of his eye, Harry saw comprehension down on a few of their faces. The boy with food all down his front nudged the girl next to him and pointed openly at Harry's forehead. Bir an hani bu filmlerinde Darmstrang'den bir tane bile kız görmedi, görmediydik. Bu Bix Buttons'dan hani bir tane bile erkek görmediydik. Ama aslında iki tarafında hem kızları hem oğlanları var falan. Öyle. The boy with food all down his front nudged the girl next to him and pointed openly at Harry's forehead. Yeah, that's Harry Potter, said a growling voice from behind them. Professor Karkarov spun around. Madai Moody was standing there, 
leaning heavily on his staff, his magical eye glaring unblinkingly at the downstrength headmaster. The color drained from Karkarov's face as he washed. A terrible look of mingled fury and fear came over him. You, he said, staring at Moody as though unsure he was really seeing him. Me, said Moody grimly. And unless you've got anything to say to Potter Karkarov, you might want to move. You're blocking the doorway. It was true. Half the students in the hall were now waiting behind them, looking over one another's shoulders to see what was causing the hold up. Without another word, Professor Karkarov swept his students away with him. Moody watched him until he was out of sight, his magical eye fixed upon his back, a look of intense dislike upon his mutilated face. As the next day was Saturday, most students would normally have breakfasted late, breakfast, breakfasted late. Böyle bir kelime yok herhalde ama gerçi İngilizce olduğu için kullanılabiliyor. Harry, Ron and Hermione, however, were not alone in rising much earlier than they usually did on weekends. When they went down into the entrance hall, they saw about 20 people milling around it, some of them eating toast, all examining the goblet of fire. It had been placed in the center of the hall on the stool that normally bore the sorting head. A thin golden line had been traced on the floor, forming a circle 10 feet around it in every direction. Anyone put their name in yet? Ron asked a third-year girl eagerly. All the Darmstrang lot, she replied, but I haven't seen anyone from Hogwarts yet. But some of them put it in last night after we'd all gone to bed, said Harry. I would have, I would have if it had been me. Wouldn't have wanted everyone watching. What if the goblet just got you right back out again? Someone laughed behind Harry. Turning, he saw Fred, George, and Lee Jordan hurrying down the staircase, all three of them looking extremely excited. Done it, Fred said in a triumphant whisper to Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Just taken it. What, said Ron, the aging portion, dung brains, said Fred. One drop each, said George, rubbing his hands together with glee. We only need to be a few months older. We're going to split the thousand galleons between the three of us if one of us wins said Lee, grinning broadly. I'm not sure this is going to work, you know, said Hermione warningly. I'm sure Dumbledore will have thought of this. Fred, George, and Lee ignored her. Ready, Fred said to the other two, quivering with excitement. Come on, then, I go first. He watched, fascinated, as Fred pulled a slip of parchment out of his pocket, beating the words, Fred Weasley, Hogwarts. Fred walked right up to the edge of the line and stood there, rocking on his toes like a diver preparing for a 50-foot drop. Then, with the eyes of every person in the entrance hall upon him, he took a great breath and stepped over the line. For a split second, he thought it had worked. George certainly thought so, for he let out a yell of triumph and leapt after Fred. But next moment, there was a loud sizzling sound, and both twins were hurled out of the golden circle, as though they had been thrown by an invisible shot putter. They landed painfully, ten feet away on the cold stone floor, and to add insult to injury, there was a loud popping noise, and both of them sprouted identical long white beards. Akuma Shegar, neden? Moody dördüncü bir okulla Harry'nin adını koydu da Hogwarts'a beraber koymadı. Ha, bir şekilde çünkü garanti girmesi gerekiyordu tamam. Yani gayet Harry'den daha zeki olduğuna karar verebilir e, Goblet başka birinin. Biraz zor ama verebilir yani. They landed painfully ten feet away on the cold stone floor and to add insult to injury, there was a loud popping noise and both of them sprouted identical long white beards. The entrance hall rang with louder. Even Fred and George joined in once they had gotten to their feet and taken a good look at each other's beards. I did warn you, said a deep, amused voice, and everyone turned to see Professor Dumbledore coming out of the great hall. He surveyed Fred and George, his eyes twinkling. I suggest you both go up to Madame Pomfrey. She's already tending to Miss Falcat of Ravenclaw and Mr. Summers of Hufflepuff, both of whom decided to age themselves up a little too. Though I must say, neither of their beards is anything like 
as fine as yours. Fred and George set off for the hospital wing, accompanied by Lee, who was howling with Lada. And Hiriron and Harmony also shortly went in to breakfast. The decorations in the Great Hall had changed this morning. As it was Halloween, a cloud of live beds was fluttering around the enchanted ceiling, while hundreds of carved pumpkins leered from every corner. Harry led the way over to Dean and Seamus, who were discussing those Hogwarts students of 17 or over who might be entering. There's a rumor going around that Warrington got up early and put his name in, Dean told Harry, that big block from Slytherin who looks like a sloth. Harry, who had played Quidditch against Warrington, shook his head in disgust. We can't have a Slytherin champion. And all the Hufflepuffs are talking about Diggory, said Seamus contemptuously, but I wouldn't have thought he'd have wanted to risk his good looks. <clears throat> Listen, said Harmony suddenly. People were cheering out in the entrance hall. They all swiveled around in their seats and saw Angelina Johnson coming into the hall, grinning in an embarrassed sort of way. A tall black girl who played chaser on the Gryffindor Quidditch team. Angelina came over to them, sat down and said, well, I've done it, just put my name in. You're kidding, said Ron, looking impressed. Are you 17 then, asked Harry. Of course she is. Can see a bird, can you, said Ron. I had my birthday last week, said Angelina. Well, I'm glad someone from Gryffindor's entering, said Harmony. I really hope you get it, Angelina. Thanks, Harmony, said Angelina, smiling at her. Yeah, better you than pretty boy, Diggory, said Seamus, causing several Hufflepuffs passing their table to scroll heavily at him. What are we going to do today, then? Ron asked Harry and Harmony when they had finished breakfast and were leaving the Great Hall. We haven't been down to visit Hagrid yet, said Harry. Okay, said Ron, just as long as he doesn't ask us to donate a few fingers to the screws. A look of great excitement suddenly dawned on Harmony's face. I just realized I haven't asked Hagrid to join SPEW yet. <coughs> <coughs> She said brightly, wait for me, will you, while I nip upstairs and get the badges. What is it with her, said Ron, exasperated as Harmony ran away up the marble staircase. Hey, Ron, said Harry suddenly, it's your friend. The students from Big Buttons were coming through the front doors from the grounds, among them the villa girl. Those gathered around the goblet of fire stood back to let them pass. Watching eagerly, Madame Maxim entered the hall behind her students and organized them into a line. One by one, the big button students stepped across the age line and dropped their slips of parchment into the blue-white flames. As each name entered the fire, it turned briefly red and emitted sparks. What do you recall happened to the ones who aren't chosen? Ron muttered to Harry as the villa girl dropped her parchment into the goblet of fire. Recon, they'll go back to school or hang around to watch the tournament. Don't know, said Harry. Hang around, I suppose. But the Maxim's thing to judge, isn't she? Then all the big buttons students had submitted their names. Madame Maxim led them back out of the hall and out onto the grounds again. Where are they sleeping then, said Ron, moving toward the front doors and staring after them. A loud rattling noise behind them announced Harmony's reappearance with the box of SPEW badges. Oh good, hurry up, said Ron. And he jumped down the stone steps, keeping his eyes on the back of the villa girl, who was now halfway across the lawn with Madame Maxim. As they neared Hagrid's cabin on the edge of the Forbidden Forest, the mystery of the Big Spotton's sleeping quarters was solved. The gigantic powder blue carriage in which they had arrived had been parked 200 yards from Hagrid's front door. And the students were climbing back inside it. The elephantine flying horses that had pulled the carriage were now grazing in a makeshift paddock alongside it. Harry knocked on Hagrid's door and Fang's booming barks answered instantly. But time, said Hagrid, when he'd flung open the door. Thought you loaded, loaded, forgotten where I live. 
We've been really busy. Her Hermione started to say, but then she stopped dead, looking up at Hagrid, apparently lost for words. Hagrid was wearing his best and very horrible hairy brown suit, <clears throat> plus a checked yellow and orange tie. This wasn't the worst of it, though. He had evidently tried to tame his hair using large quantities of what appeared to be axle grease. <clears throat> It was now slicked down into two bunches. Perhaps he had tried a ponytail like Bill's, but found he had too much hair. The look didn't really suit Hagrid at all. For a moment, Harmony goggled at him, then obviously deciding not to comment, she said, uh, Where are the screws? Out by the pumpkin patch, said Hagrid happily. They are getting massive, must be nearly three foot long now. Only trouble is, they started killing each other. Oh no, really, said Harmony, shooting a repressive look at Ron, who, staring at Hagrid's odd hairstyle, had just opened his mouth to say something about it. Yes, yeah, said Hagrid sadly, it's okay though, I've got them in separate boxes now, still got about 20. Well, that's lucky, said Ron, Hagrid missed the sarcasm. Hagrid's cabin comprised a single room, in one corner of which was a gigantic bed covered in a patchwork quilt. Quilt. Killed Dijem. A similarly enormous wooden table and chair stood in front of the fire beneath the quantity of cured hams and dead birds hanging from the ceiling. They sat down at the table while Hagrid started to make tea and were soon immersed in yet more discussion of the Tree Wizard tournament. Hagrid seemed quite as excited about it as they were. You wait, he said, grinning. Just, you just wait. You're going to see some stuff you've never seen before. First task, ah, but I'm not supposed to say. Go on, Hagrid, Harry, Ron, and Harmony urged him, but he just shook his head, grinning. I don't want to spoil it for you, said Hagrid, but it's going to be spectacular. I'll tell you that. Them champions are going to have their work cut out. Never thought I'd leave to see the Three Wizard Tournament played again. They ended up having lunch with Hagrid, though they didn't eat much. Hagrid had made what he said was a beef casserole, but after Harmony unearthed a large tail in hers, she, Harry, and Ron rather lost their appetites. However, they enjoyed themselves trying to make Hagrid to tell them what the tasks in the tournament were going to be, speculating which of the entrants were likely to be selected as champions and wondering whether Fred and George were beardless yet. A light rain had started to fall by mid-afternoon. It was very cozy sitting by the fire, listening to the gentle patter of the drops on the window, watching Hagrid donning his socks and arguing with Harmony about house elves. For he flatly refused to join SPEWB when she showed him her badges. It had been doing him an unkindness, Harmony, he said gravely, threading a massive bone needle with thick yellow yarn. It's in their nature to look after humans. That's what they like, see? It'd be making them unhappy to take them away their work, to, to take away their work and insulting them if you try to pay them. Yani bunu Hagrid diyesi ya bence bu baya ciddi bir eleştiri olmuş oluyordu ve Hermione bence bu aşamada vazgeçmeye karar vermiş olması lazım. Olmayacak gibi sanki ama hani Hagrid'in lafı aslında çok önemli çünkü cidden Öyle sihirli yaratıklardan anlayan insan Hagrid yani ve hepsini de seviyor falan. Hani elfleri de seviyor gayet ev cinlerini. Ve onların kendi başına bırakılması gerektiğini düşünmesi Hagrid'in yani en büyük eleştiri yani şu an. But he said Dobby free and he was over the moon about it said Hermione. And we heard he is asking for wages now. Wages now. Yeah well you get weirdos in every breed. I'm not saying that isn't the old elf would take freedom, but you'll never persuade most of them to do it. No, nothing doing Harmony. Harmony looked very cross indeed and stuffed her box of pages back into her cloak pocket. By half past five, it was growing dark, and Ron, Harry, and Harmony decided it was time to get back up to the castle for the Halloween feast, and more important, the announcement of the school champions. Ben bu Goblet of Fire'la bu kısım arasında bir iki bölüm olur gibi kalmış aklımda. Direkt aynı bölümde vermiş ama very good yani. 
I'll come with you, said Hagrid, putting away his darning. Just give us a sec. Hagrid got up, went across to the chest of the robbers beside his bed, and began searching for something inside it. They didn't pay too much attention until a truly horrible smell reached their nostrils. Coughing, Ron said, Hagrid, what's that? Eh, said Hagrid, turning around with a large bottle in his hand. Don't you like it? Is that aftershave, said Hermione in a slightly choked voice. Eh, Eau de Cologne, Hagrid muttered. He was blushing. Maybe it's a bit much, he said gruffly. I'll go take it off. Hang on, bir dakika. He stumped out of the cabin, and they saw him washing himself vigorously in the water barrel outside the window. Eo de Cologne, said Hermione in amazement. Hagrid? And what's with the hair and the suet, said Harry in an undertone. Look, said Ron suddenly, pointing out of the window. Hagrid had just straightened up and turned around. If he had been blushing before, it was nothing to what he was doing now. Getting to their feet very cautiously so that Hagrid wouldn't spot them. Harry, Ron, and Harmony peered through the window and saw that Madame Maxime and the big Buttons students had just emerged from their carriage, clearly about to set off for the feast too. They couldn't hear what Hagrid was saying, but he was talking to Madame Maxime with a rapt, misty-eyed expression Harry had only ever seen him wear once before. When he had been looking at the baby dragon, Norbert, where about here? He's going up to the castle with her, said Hermione indignantly. I thought he was waiting for us. This is Sotte, falling up here. Without so much as a backward glance at his cabin, Hagrid was trudging off up the grounds with Madame Maxim, the big Spartans, students following in their wake, jogging to keep up with their enormous strides. He fancies her, said Ron incredulously. Well, if they end up having children, they'll be setting a world record, but any baby of theirs would weigh about a ton. They let themselves out of the cabin and shut the door behind them. It was surprisingly dark outside. Drawing their cloaks more closely around themselves, they set off up the sloping lawns. Oh, it's them! Look, Harmony Richbird! The Darmstrang party was walking up toward the castle from the lake. Victor Crumb was walking side by side with Karkarov, and the other downstream students were straggling along behind them. Ron watched Crumb excitedly, but Crumb did not look around as he reached the front doors a little ahead of Harmony, Ron, and Harry and proceeded through them. When they entered the candlelit great hall, it was almost full. The goblet of fire had been moved. It was now standing in front of Dumbledore's empty chair at the teacher's table. Fred and George, clean shaven again, seemed to have taken their disappointment fairly well. Hobbit's Angelina said Fred as Harry, Ron and Harmony sat down. So do I, said Harmony breathlessly. Well, we'll soon know. I'm Akim, Harry, I'm Akim, Harry. The Halloween feast seemed to take much longer than usual. Perhaps because it was their second feast in two days, Harry didn't seem to fancy the extravagantly prepared food as much as he would have normally. Yeah, the Halloween feast seemed to take much longer than usual, did they? Perhaps because it was their second feast in two days, Harry didn't seem to fancy the extravagantly prepared food as much as he would have normally. Hani böyle... Dünkü yemeği güp güzelliğiydi. İlk defa görüyordu o kadar güzel yemekleri falan. Şimdi artık e, o açlığı gittiği için, şımarıklık onun yerine aldığı için falan şımarıklık demeyeyim de. O açlığı gittiği için daha yavaş yemiş, daha çok heveslenmeden yemiş falan. Like everyone else in the hall, judging by the constantly craning necks, the impatient expressions on every face, the fidgeting and the standing up to see whether Dumbledore had finished eating yet, he simply wanted the place to clear and to hear who had been selected as champions. Şimdi şey hayal edin tamam mı? İlk defa okuyanız Ateş Kadeni daha filmi falan çıkmamış, alakası yok falan. Yani ilk okuyanlardansınız, hiç spoiler almamışsınız. Yani şu an bir şekilde Harry ile Harry'nin bir şekilde bu işe gireceğini bekliyorsunuz falan tamam mı? Ama bir yandan da beklemiyorsunuz çünkü öyle bir ihtimal yok falan hani. Ama birden Harry'nin adı çıkacak falan tamam mı? Çok iyi yani, çok heyecanlı, çok iyi yani. At long last, the golden place returned to their original spotless state. There was a sharp up 
swing in the level of noise within the hall, which died away almost instantly as Dumbledore got to his feet. On either side of him, Professor Karkarov and Madame Maxim looked as tense and expectant as anyone. Ludo Bagman was beaming and winking at various students. Mr. Crouch, however, looked quite uninterested, almost bored. Şu an şeyin etkisinin altında. Imperius'un aynı. Mr. Crouch on Imperius etkisinin altında bu arada. Well, the goblet is almost ready to make its decision, said Dumbledore. Hani bir gün önce de öyleydi bu arada. I estimate that it requires one more minute. Now, when the champions' names are called, I will ask them please to come up to the top of the hall, walk along the staff table, and go through into the next chamber. He indicated the door behind the staff table, where they will be receiving their first instructions. He took out his wand and gave a great sweeping wave with it. At once, all the candles except those inside the carved pumpkins were extinguished plunging them into a state of sem semi-darkness. The goblet of fire now shone more brightly than anything in the whole hall. Whole hall, I know. Whole hall, I know, Pneola. The sparkling bright blue whiteness of the flames almost painful on the eyes. Everyone watched, waiting. A few people kept checking their watches. Watch. Any second, Lee Jordan whispered to sits away from Harry. The flames inside the goblet turned suddenly red again. Sparks began to fly from it. Next moment, a tongue of flame shot into the air. A cherished piece of parchment fluttered out of it. The whole room gasped. The Dumbledore, the Dumbledore, they showed them early day. Dumbledore caught the piece of parchment and held it at arm's length so that he could read it by the light of the flames, which had turned back to blue-white. The champion will, for dumb strength, he read in a strong, clear voice, will be Victor Crumb. No surprises there, he outrun as a storm of applause and cheating swept the hall. He saw Victor Crumb rise from the Slytherin table and slouch up toward Dumbledore. He turned right, walked along the staff table and disappeared through the door into the next chamber. Bravo, Victor Boone Karkaro, so loudly that everyone could hear him, even over all the applause, knew you had it in you. The clapping and chatting died down. Now everyone's attention was focused, focused again on the goblet, which seconds later turned red once more. A second piece of parchment shot out of it, propelled by the flames. The champion for Big's button, said Dumbledore, is Fleur de la Cour. It's her run, he shouted as the girl who so resembled Avila got gracefully to her feet, shook back her sheet of silvery blonde hair and swept up between the Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff tables. Oh, look, dear, all disappointed, Hermione said over the noise, nodding toward the remainder of the Big Spotton's party. Disappointed was a bit of an understatement, Harry thought. Two of the girls who had not been selected had dissolved into tears and were sobbing with their heads on their arms. When Fleur de la Cour too had vanished into the side chamber, silence fell again, but this time it was a silence so stiff with excitement. You could almost taste it, the Hogwarts champion next. And the goblet of fire turned red once more, sparks showered out of it, the tongue of flame shot high into the air, and from its tip Dumbledore pulled the third piece of parchment. The Hogwarts champion, he called, is Cedric Diggory. No, said Ron loudly, but nobody heard him except Harry. The uproar from the next table was too great. Every single Hufflepuff had jumped to his or he, her feet, screaming and stamping as Cedric made his way past them, grinning broadly and headed off toward the chamber behind the teacher's table. Indeed, the applause for Cedric went on so long that it was some time before Dumbledore could make himself heard again. Excellent, Dumbledore called happily as at last the tumult died down. Well, we now have our three champions. I'm sure I can count upon all of you, including the remaining students from Big Buttons and Dumbstring, to give your champions every ounce of support you can muster. By cheering your champion on, you will contribute in a very real, Derken, Derken, 
but Dumbledore suddenly stopped speaking. <clears throat> And it was apparent to everybody what had distracted him. The fire in the goblet had just turned red again. Sparks were flying out of it. A long flame shot suddenly into the air and borne upon it was another piece of parchment. Automatically, it seemed, Dumbledore reached out a long hand and seized the parchment. He held it out and stared at the name written upon it. There was a long pause during which Dumbledore stared at the slip in his hands and everyone in the room stared at Dumbledore. And then Dumbledore cleared his throat and read out, Harry Potter. Aaaa, benim kardeşim de, işte ben ona Harry Potter'ları okurken Ateş Kadehindeydik, böyle tam buraya okuduydum. Aa, ben şöyle heyecanlıyım abi, uyuyamayacağım falan yaptıydı böyle. Sonra başka bir zamanda en sevdiğim sahnelerden biri Harry Potter'ın burası falan diye yaptıydı bana. Yalan yok cidden, aşırı heyecanlı yani. Chapter 17, The Four Champions. Ana böyle birisi bu kitabı okumaya başlamadan önce bir şekilde Three Wizard lafını okumuş olsaydı ve birden bu Four Champions olayını görmüş olsaydı Harry'nin seçilmiş olacağına dair bayağı büyük bir şüphesi olmuş olurdu herhalde ama düşük ihtimal. Bence J.K. Rowling buna özellikle dikkat ediyor. The Three Wizard Cup lafını falan böyle bölüm başlıkları içinde kullanmıyor. The Four Champions'ı kullanıyor belki. Hani ne olurdu? İlk bölümlere bakan birisi The Four Champions'ı görürdü. Ondan sonra birden böyle kitabı normal okurken birden Three Wizard işte şeyi Three Wizard Cup işte Three Wizard neydi yarışma demeyi unuttum İngilizce'de. Onu gördü. Bir dakika ya. Biz Dört Champions diye bir bölüm adı gördüm ben falan. Hep aa Harry olacak falan yapmış olabilirdi. Neyse iyi boş yaptım ben de. Öyle. Hadi görüşürüz.